Hey everybody, it's the R&B show. And now, those two who put... Oh, wait a minute. Start over, Rosie. Yep. Here, let, let's just do everything over. Dang, it's two weeks in a row. Not good. All right, here we go. Hey everybody, it's the R&B show. Can you dig it? Times two. And now, the guys who put the U's in U's guys. Here's Ricardo and Brent. Thank you, Rosie. Interesting start to our show. Uh, he needs a script for the head. Yeah, like, maybe. Uh, don't worry about it, Rosie. It yeah, happens to me all the time, my friend. Dang. You just write that. it down on a <laughs> script and follow the script. I'm just going to tape it right to the machine here. Yeah, well, welcome to the R&B Show, episode number 21 of the only podcast dedicated to high school sports. In the Fox Valley area, I'm your co-host, Ricardo Arguello, hanging out, as always, with Brett Christopherson, uh, both of USA Today Network Wisconsin, and... Uh, uh, the voice you heard uh, a couple of times in various formats over there, Jim Rosadick, our McLovin. That's Rosie, right. Rosie, a boy. Uh, mm-hmm. We don't need to call him our McLovin anymore. He's our Rosie. He's our Rosie. Yeah. Um, no more, in fact, no, no I, will, I will delete that from go. the script. Take uh, it out right now. He's, yep. he's our Rosie. He is. He has surpassed McLovin. Interesting show, Brett, uh, to talk this week. It's been uh, an in- interesting week of Very interesting hoops. week. Topics. Yes, and uh, topics. Here, here is what we're gonna we're going to concentrate on. First off, a little bit of the border battle recap, and uh, Brett, I'll kind of let you handle uh, well, what why happened. Why do you got to do this to me? Sorry, my friend. Uh, we're then going to move on to the big Appletonese fallout uh, mm-hmm. with uh, Coach John Milky, 18 years as, as a Patriots uh, coach there, out um, this out. past Sunday, I guess, uh, and, and we'll. Delve into that and uh, what I've heard uh, in from various sources, that kind of thing, and maybe shed some new light or maybe some new things that, that have come to light and uh, that I did not put in the story. Um, uh, we'll mention those in a little bit. And then uh, we're going to switch a big Board of Control meeting, <coughs> Brett, up yeah, there at Stevens Point. going on now, a few isn't things, it? Yes, a few things going on over there that we'll touch base on as well because uh, it obviously it's going to affect some of our teams. Including a change in venue at a certain of a certain state tournament. Yes. Uh, so we yeah, closer to us. Lots and lots to talk about. And then we'll wrap up, obviously, with uh, you know, all the things we usually do. And then also a very short, quick preview of uh, Apple Tennis Girls basketball that's on our varsity roundtable later tonight. But, Brett, okay, listen. Now, now don't get all worked up. <laughs> Why do you do this you to do me, the, Ricardo? Don't get worked up. Uh, but Deep the, border, the border battle, uh, I'm going to let you take over for this part of it, then I'll – because I actually made it up there, but there's a reason why Brett was all worked up this week, and he kept on thinking about uh, the great opportunity that we kind of missed. Uh, I'll let you explain it, Brett. Go ahead, my friend. You know, guys, before we start, <coughs> at the start of the new year, I, I've, I've been trying to practice meditation. Okay. Uh-huh. Yeah. And I need to meditate now because I'm feeling – Yeah. It's not meditation like you guys think. It, there's a different, uh, different way to do it, and it just sort of kind of refocuses the mind. Um, I'll talk to you guys about that off air. But <laughs> okay. I'm feeling the need to do that again because I'm starting to get all fired up. Uh, yep. We were set, <coughs> very excited to stream three border battle games. Of course, that's the Wisconsin versus Minnesota uh, border battle battle annual uh, held by the, the the Wisconsin basketball yearbook, and I, I think the, it's called the breakdown on the Minnesota side. Okay. And before the holidays, I was dealing with. Uh, the editor of the Wisconsin Basketball Yearbook, our friend Mark Miller, great guy, the guru of state hoops, right? Um, mm-hmm. does, does a great job. Uh, edits, uh, also handles all the cav- coverage on Wisports.net. I uh, wanted to stream three games. Uh, Kakana, top-ranked team in Division Two; Xavier, top-ranked team in Division Three, And, of course, Spash, Stevens Point Area Senior High. That's the acronym. And I got a little bone to pick about you in the story you wrote because you called them Stevens Point Area High School. Oh, I did. <laughs> <laughs> which, which only added to the <laughs> angst that I was feeling. My apologies. Okay. Uh, the three-time defending state champions of boys basketball. Great event. Next year it's going to be Minnesota. It always goes back and forth between Minnesota and Wisconsin High School. We were all set. We were ready to go. Got the thumbs up. Was dealing with the Spash IT guy. We were good. And, uh, well, Rosie, uh, you and I were here a little bit early on Saturday, and we're all yep. ready to get packed up, and all the gear yep. was ready to go, and we were literally 12 minutes out. To 12 minutes. 12 minutes out. Ready to go. I was finishing up the game notes. Ricardo, you were here, and all of a sudden my phone rings, and that says Mark Miller. I'm like, hmm, uh. that's a strange <laughs> time to be calling me, and he said, we've got a problem. So, uh, in a nutshell, uh, come to find out that there was an exclusive streaming agreement in place between the event organizers – uh, and
and uh, a certain media group that I'm not going to uh, plug. Thank you. Uh, nope. Not going to give them their all. name. Don't do it. But it is a paid site, so you couldn't even watch the games that they were streaming. And, they, I, and I found out they only did two, I believe, of the yeah. seven. Yep. Which only adds to the anger. I got anger at management issues. I got I got to deal with those. But uh, so, uh, despite uh, numerous attempts by us through Mark, and Mark felt terrible. He felt he didn't know that this agreement was in place. Um, and I dealt with his counterpart on the Minnesota side. You guys were here to listen to that conversation, and he felt no. bad. Um, but essentially, it sounded like uh, neither uh, was real clear as to what was in this agreement, and, and didn't know that there was a streaming. Uh, exclusivity clause yeah. in there. Was uh, there even really a contract? I mean, nobody even seemed to know uh, there where was it a, was. Apparently there was a contract because Mark then called me again and said, just come over, I want you guys here. And then like minutes after he said, ah, you can't because they're threatening to sue. <laughs> and we yeah. like, okay. It, he actually did sign something, right? <clears throat> Excuse me, I, I can't even remember. I know the Minnesota guy did, and this is where it was all, it all was through him, uh, okay. the Minnesota guy. Yeah. And he felt bad, and, and he, he just didn't know. That. Um, so, in a nutshell, or, or to make a long story shorter, even though I'm making it long, we, we ha- had to pull the plug because we didn't think it was uh, worth court proceedings <laughs> to stream three high school games when there was yeah. uh, a competing outlet there that had exclusivity rights. What bogged me, as I said, uh, we even tried to, to get around it and said, well, we're only streaming three games. Can't we kind of work around this? Yeah. And they said no, and they only, I think, did two. And I know they're they're hot on Jordan McCabe and following him and, it's too bad because the games went out went went as I expected. McCabe, another fantastic outing yep. for him. Yeah, and uh, lit it up and, and put on a show. Xavier did what it's been doing. It's uh, what, what what is their winning streak at? Like uh, 40, 44. 44 in a row. Unless they played yesterday, but I'm not I'm not sure on that. So you know they they lit it up in a great game, and these are really good teams they're playing. Ricardo, you were there uh, from a, a coverage standpoint, and then Spash and, uh, and Drew Blair has been having a fantastic season. He he yeah. put in forty. In a good game against, uh, I think it was Minnehaha Academy, which was playing a really good eighth grader, and uh, I, 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 what did we do? we determined that they, we we probably missed out on well over a hundred thousand yeah. total views on because yep. I know that there are folks that wanted to watch the games. Thankfully, everywhere. I mean, in Minnesota too. I the sent three out high I, schools. I sent out links to all the high schools that that we were going to be covering. Yep. And uh, but thankfully, the response was more. We're actually getting to this point uh, in high school sports where there's exclusive rights agreements. And I can say yes because we've been dealing with that with a certain cable outlet yeah. uh, in playoffs that's no longer uh, An anything issue. we have to yeah. deal with. But, yeah, we have reached this point now, Ricardo, where there's exclusive uh, rights broadcast going on at the high school level. So folks were a little bit more uh, upset with that than, than us. It was completely out of our control. But you talk about bad timing. Uh, not a good time after we had promoted it. Files were set up. All the legwork was done. All the pre-production uh, stuff was done. And there's a lot that goes into even one stream, let alone three. Um, and I was a little fired up after that. Uh, I know, Ricardo, again, you still went over to Stevens Point. Rosie, within an hour, was digging into a, a plate of Mexican food yep. at a local establishment and drinking a margarita. Comfort you know, food. He was and fine. He yep. was fine with Oh, it. no, I wasn't Brett, fine. Brett, I was, Brett, uh, that, steam that, was coming out of my ears. That's comfort food, and we'll just say calming me down a little bit. Yes, because after I left for Stevens Point to cover from a print and online kind of a di- uh, uh, aspect, uh, I, later that night I came back after it was all said and done, and Mike said that you were still here when he came in, and you were still stewing about it. Oh, yeah. You, you were still on fire. So, uh, you know, unfortunate what happened, um, you know, things out of our control here. Completely it, out of our and control. And so, uh, b- but I'll, I'll tell you this, the only losers here were – was the audience that missed those games. I was there, uh, especially concerning the Kakana Minneapolis North mm-hmm. game. Very entertaining. Very little defense played. <laughs> uh, what was it, like 122 to 110 or something? Yeah, yeah. 122 to 103, if 103. I recall. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> just an incre- I, I don't think I've ever seen – I've never been at a high school game where both teams scored 100. That was a first for me. Set a new mark for, for Kakana for, uh, for the team scoring uh, as well as allowed. Uh, and then also for the 21 three-pointers that they hit. That they hit. Uh, it, w- it, w- it was quite a clinic that they put on, so uh, I was really impressed. I know everyone else there was impressed with what Kakana did, especially Jordan McCabe, and then Xavier to come back to start slow and then come back and beat, uh, um, it was it uh, not Minnehaha? Minnetonka. Minnetonka. Yeah. Um, great showing by our teams that we could not show anyone. 
that's what really hurts the most, like you said. So, Brett, I'll let you have one more last say, but then we got to move on because yeah. I, I even get upset when I when I think about it, about how much we Again, you're there. right. The, our viewership uh, lost out because we, uh, we would have been massive numbers, uh, massive yeah. numbers. We, yeah. we would have been a complete day-long record for us uh, as far as total oh, views yeah. on Easy. streams that we've done. Uh, it, it was just very disappointing. And, again, knowing that the amount of work that is put in pre-production on these things uh, and you know, there was a little disrespect maybe shown from uh, that competing bit. media, oh, media yeah. outlet Trolling. On, yeah. on a tweet to me. Yeah. So uh, you really want to get me fired up? That's a good way to do it. So mm -hmm. uh, uh, I just, but you know, I'm calm down yeah. sort of right now. But I feel like it, you know, it was January week last week too, and it was that was going to be the, the exclamation point. I was always oh, a fun yeah. week of uh, hoops live streams, and it just kind of fizzled out, yep. and it was very disappointing to say the least. Well, lesson learned, hopefully, and uh, exclusive ex exclusivity on, a, on, a, on, a, on a, an event that and big. If I ever have the unless effort. unless they're shelling out significant dollars, and it, it wasn't sense. and it wasn't significant it was not. dollars. We don't need to tell uh, them how much. But right. So I mean, you know, it's it is what it is, Brett. And now, now we have to wait for two years for that. Now to we have come to wait for two years to come back. I was just yeah. going to say because now it's going to be in Minnesota next year. If there's ever a time or a place that I can get back at said company. I will with a vengeance. We have to be, we have to be professional. Yeah, Rosie, come yeah. on now. I know, you, I know you're very fired up. Well, you know, there. my vengeance might not be as big as other people's vengeance. It okay. might be real, right. real tiny. So. You little mean, vengeance. You mean, like, you mean like pulling a plug on them or something? <laughs> and Mini you vengeance? Could, you know, I had no idea those scissors were going to fall on that <laughs> Ethernet cable like Easy that. Easy now. You're going to implicate wow, yourself. In ah, no, no, no. I'm kidding. All right. Let's move okay, on. Okay, yes. And the biggest topic uh, for this area... Uh, in, in a long time in terms of the sports world. Appleton East, John Milkey, Sunday morning uh, following an uh, encounter uh, two days previous, uh, uh, Friday night following their loss to Appleton West. Steps down as coach of Appleton East High School, tells his kids, look, uh, basically because of that encounter, parents had, had told him that kids, there's you know a segment of, of 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 the team that didn't want him to be coach or didn't want to play for him, you know, and, and we all know John Milkey uh, and how hard he works for the kids and how emotional he does get because these kids, he, and, and, I, and I'm not saying this just because you know to to fluff the guy, he really does love these kids from what I have seen. Um, long story short, Brett, to just so we can move the discussion further, a shocking a shocking situation because. There was only, what, seven or eight games left in, in the regular season. Milky felt this disheartened to call it quits with that few games remaining, not just him, but initially uh, the varsity staff too. The varsity coaches also said to heck with it. We're out too. Um, what were your thoughts quickly when you heard about this, Brett? I mean, it had to have been shocking because we all know Milky. It was. I think when I, when I saw the news come out, I had to kind of reread it twice. I John Milkey stepping down now and, and read your coverage and you did, you've done a great job of following the story and pushing it through. And um, First of all, um, some folks need to step up and talk, all right? And uh, John Milkey's one of them. Uh, he needs to step up and, and, and let's, let's, let's get this story, let's, let's get your side of the things, uh, side of the story out there and, 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 and what happened, as much as you can say. But I'd like to see uh, the parent who thought it was wise to approach John Milkey after a game in a local bar. Yeah. Um, and I'd like to, for him to have the guts to stand up and say what happened and, and why he felt the need to approach the head coach a, a, at that time. That is neither the time nor the place for an encounter like that to take uh, for, to, to happen, right? I mean, I think we all yeah, agree with that. I, absolutely. You, that's, he's out there. He's unwinding from a, a tough game, uh, trying to relax, trying to get through it, get past it, get ready for the next game. My other thought is this, and you kind of alluded to it, that must have been one heck of a conversation, one heck of a heated conversation for John. And we know John, or at least you yeah. and I know John. I mean, I've, I've covered him, and, and I think he's a, got a heart of gold, and he's a teddy bear under that, underneath that Greek, uh, gruff exterior. He kind of looks a little mean and nasty sometimes, but he's a great guy, always treated me right, and I always treated you right as well. John has never struck me as a guy that would just quit. And say, you know, especially at this, we're almost, t tomorrow's February. I mean, there's only like a few weeks left in the regular yeah. season and then playoffs. So there's not much uh, season remaining. That must have been one 
heck of a conversation for John to say, I'm done, I've had it. And in my opinion, I think there was a buildup. I don't think it was just that night. I think the, the section of or the small group of parents had been probably ragging on Coach Milky uh, for a while now, uh, either within the framework of the game, uh, outside of it. Uh, something new that, that has come to my attention it was that there was a, an inappropriate text mm. allegedly sent to a friend of John that was asked to pass along to Coach Milky. That's, uh, that's at following the game, and this was before the encounter over uh, at the tavern, uh, <laughs> all of this speaks of parents stepping out of where they should be. I, don't wanna, I hate to say, use the term stay in your lane, but parents in, in that setting, Brad, I agree with you, absolutely ridiculous that it even came to that point. There's a, there's a, a, a procedure that you follow. If the coach has a problem with perhaps what Coach Milky has said or, or, or done, then you go to coach. If it's not resolved there, then it goes higher up the chain. I mean, that's usually what you do. You don't, you don't ambush the guy. And I'm going to use the term ambush because there's no other really way to describe it. You ambush the man uh, as he's reflecting on the loss. You know, John is a guy who takes those losses very personal. I have covered many of his games. After wins, he gets emotional <laughs> in terms of what he could have done to, to, you know, in terms of improve and that kind of stuff. So after tough losses, I've seen him very emotional. Also, the longest post-game speeches uh, in the history yes, of high school basketball, this right? Is guy, this is a guy. <laughs> yeah, who, that's right. He, and here's what it comes down to. In my opinion, this is a man who has put in 18 years. He's, a, he's earned enough equity, okay, to do things his way, number one. Number two, to go out on his terms as well. What we have here is a small segment of East parents who don't see it that way, who uh, right now, because their kids are on the team, and this is, uh, this is something I have a problem with parents, is that they're always about me. You know, they're always about what my kid is doing in this certain time period within the varsity you know, team. You know, it's once the kids are graduated, oh, you know, whatever, I'll go back to doing whatever I'm doing. But John will continue to coach. You know, uh, it, these parents have been a little bit too vociferous and force a great man from the sidelines, a man, and Brett, you can just tell this by the, by the response he's gotten on social media, that has affected hundreds of lives, if not thousands, okay? I've, if you would know the feedback that I've gotten uh, from past players, from coaches. Uh, Competing these, these are revered coaches that have reached out to me. You would be shocked. I'm not shocked because we all know how, how talented uh, Coach Milky is and what he brings to the table, but uh, I think folks out there, uh, have no idea how much he has infected and impacted lives for the better in the positive, Brett. And this is something that is going to continue in terms of what we're trying to uh, find out. Hopefully Coach will talk because I don't think we can properly close this. No, he needs to. We cannot properly close this uh, story sequence until he, he, he speaks. If the parents would like to, I'm at PC Ricardo on Twitter, or you can you know email me, uh, R-A-R-G-U-E, L L O at postcrescent.com. I will take your uh, uh, side of things as well. I mean, that's what I'm doing, but uh, I've yet to hear from any parents uh, that were supposedly, or allegedly, I want to say, you know, they're at either at the bar or from what I've heard, and I have several, several sources who confirm what was going on during the game where there were, there were basically, you know, I don't, I don't know how, how to describe it, but they were letting John how they know how they feel. Uh, during the game about certain situations and things like that, his coaching style. Heckling, uh, maybe? Heckling, I guess you could say heckling. And, and East is having a – they're struggling this And they're year. struggling this yeah. year. They're 4-10. and ten. But, look, I was at the East-North game. Last night, Oshkosh North, yep. And I'm going to say this as, as, as nicely as I can. East right now does not have the talent, okay, to compete against the Oshkosh North – or I should say not compete, beat an Oshkosh North, beat a Kimberly – Okay, they don't have the resources right now to do that, at least on a consistent level, I, it's, which is surprising because John Milkey is known for bringing the best out of his players. Your best chance was having Coach Milkey there. Uh, and I've seen this in the past in other teams. You know, Brett, how many times have we seen scores? We say, how the hell, how the, oh, I'm sorry, excuse me, how the heck did <laughs> East win this game knowing the roster that they have? You know, other than the 2010-11 season, around that era, they had an incredible team. Yeah, they Don't did. get me wrong, a lot of talent. But, you know, in many programs, it ebbs and flows. You know, there's, there's highs and sure. lows. Uh, right now, they're, they're, they're kind of in a, in a low period right now. This is no disrespect to the players because they're working hard and putting in the time. But right now, the realistic 
uh, view of this is that you're, you're, you're not able to compete or able to beat those teams consistently right now for Apple's teams. So why run out a coach who gives you at least a shooting chance to do that, a puncher's chance to do that? Yeah, Two well, things here. Go ahead, Rosie. For you guys, do you see this as a new low for parents? Problems in sporting uh, things like this where they just take it upon themselves and maybe like a lynch mob sort of mentality rather than going to the AD or the principal. And second one, do you ever see Coach Milky finding a new spot to coach somewhere down the line after all this is kind of blown over? Can I take the first one, Brett? Yeah, go ahead. And if you want to add on, go ahead. In terms of like engaging a coach outside of the school, um, I think this is more of an anomaly than anything else. Now, we have seen some very esteemed coaches within the last, what, 10, 12 years, Brett? I was just going to say the John um, Myron deal. The John Myron ago. thing with Kimberly, uh, again, that was a small group of parents, very vociferous parents, who kind of you know, spearheaded that move, in my opinion, a mistake. Uh, no, nothing, no, nothing against Coach Lucky Works. He's a great coach, and he's doing a fantastic job there. But in terms of that time frame, yeah. to let a coach of that caliber, because you don't agree with the way he – he yells too much or whatever principles that you didn't agree yeah. with it was ridiculous and then the one that i am i will shout to the to my to my end days here about jeff chu mm -hmm. initially being released or being let go by saint mary catholic that's at saint mary central at the time he leaves they immediately go in, in into a tailspin that, that that program becomes very 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 underperforming mm -hmm. wins non-existent and then he goes and builds up hortonville becomes a great team there and then almost the same thing happens there where some parents uh didn't don't agree because you know he's very similar to coach milky he's kind of an old school guy gruff know? exterior and but a hard right. gold inside so, yeah. so yeah. he has to leave hortonville in that way he goes back to st mary catholic and what happens st mary catholic starts winning again okay sometimes uh this is what i want to let all my generation x parents my age because all their kids are around in high school right now Stay out of the coaching thing because <laughs> that's an element that, that you don't know how hard these coaches work, how many hours they put in. You're sitting there in the stands. You look down. Uh, you, this is not even about officials, but you, you see calls being made, and you're 150 feet away, but yet you, you know what the call was made. Let the coaches coach. Let them do their job. Their job is to develop these players on the court, and many of them do a fine job of developing them off the court, both men and uh, for, for the boys and the girls, Brett. Stay out of it. Stay out of it. Cheer. Talk to your kids after the game. If there's problems, follow the proper protocol that you got to do. But, yeah, y y there's got to be a, a level of respect shown because uh, it, it's rare when you see it the other way around, when coaches disrespect the parents. You know, you don't ever see those stories, if I'm correct. Um, <laughs> so that's all I'm going to say, Brett, because I'm getting a little worked up. Uh, anything you want to add? And the second part of that question about Milky. I don't uh, see him coming. I think he's done. Okay. I do. What a, what, what, what a gain that would be, though, for an area school to have him as an assistant, though. Um, because there is one thing about, about Coach Milky, and I've gotten this feedback from a lot of players, not even from the Appleton area, from players he's, he coached at clinics or when he was at the WBCA All-Star Games, uh, how much he has impacted them just in the short time frame that they, were encountering, mm -hmm. that they encountered with him. He would be a major, major get for any program uh, to be as an assistant because he works great with – with these players one-on-one -on, -one on all the fundamentals that you, you, you can think of. So, boy, I hope, I hope this is the last we've seen of Coach Milky in terms of being around basketball because I think the basketball world, at least in our, in our little world here, uh, really took a big hit by him, by him stepping down. You know, I, I, as I say that, though, then I remember the 10 years ago when the, with the John Myron situation, that, that was a closed-door school board meeting in which his right. contract wasn't renewed, and there were some you know, rumors about what was going on uh, and what led to that? Uh, Some administrators. I remember this. Yeah. yeah. So, and I, it, the cool thing was, I had a pretty good relationship with John, and at, at the, uh, shortly thereafter, he did grant me an interview. We did a nice Q and A with him, mm -hmm. and he, you know, s told his side of the story. And I'm really hoping that John can, uh, Milky can do uh, somewhat similar uh, with you, Ricardo. So hopefully, John uh, talks. Um, but then, as I say that, I didn't think, I didn't know John, and he's got a strong personality as well. I didn't, I didn't know he could come back as an, as an assistant. And he did with Little Shoot, and they went to state twice. Mm, Fantastic coaching. M credit Mickey Martin, the head coach, for bringing him in. He also had Dan Valentine, who won a state title at Freedom, and Shane Knutson, who was part of the state runs with Brian Butch as, as yes, an assistant Appleton at Appleton West, West mm -hmm. and also the head coach at West. So credit Mickey for surrounding himself and building a, a fantastic staff. They all 
played a role with Mickey being the driver of, of those state runs. Then John went and took the head job at Eschwabadon for a number of years, and now he's at Freedom, uh, Freedom for his probably his last stop, and I don't know how, how long he'll be at Freedom. but uh, So, yeah, maybe John, maybe, uh, maybe he gives a decompresses, relaxes a little bit. Maybe he could come back. I just don't see him in that assistance chair. He's a head coach. Before Appleton East, he was at Anago and, and uh, did some nice things with the, with the Red Robins as well. I agree with you, but I'm, you know, in, in this, this, we can touch on this quickly, though. The old school coaches, and we talked about this yesterday, the old school coaches, the ones that are gruff, the ones who like to yell, that just doesn't work anymore. And I know that there's people out there that say you're soft, we're a soft society. Maybe so, but that's how society has evolved. And coaches need to evolve too because the kids nowadays don't respond typically to constant, you know, there's got to be some give and take there, and a coach has to see that and recognize that. I'm not blaming John at that. I'm just looking at it as a whole because I think that it's probably going to be a story you're going to tackle at some point looking at this, talking to different coaches. Does the old school style where, you, where you're really riding these with these guys and, and trying to instill toughness in that sense, barking at them a lot, does that work with the kids nowadays? Does that work with the parents nowadays? I say it doesn't. It it's, doesn't. It's interesting that you say evolve. I would counter and say that we have devolved, actually. Uh, you call that prog progress. I don't. I don't know if it uh, is progress. Uh, but it's, it's, it's definitely, but, but I do agree with you, it has changed. It's definitely and, changed. And, so and, and this is something, what do you do? And this is something, and again, I'm looking at all you Generation Xers out there, if you're listening to me, we're the ones that have done this. We're the ones that have essentially killed the way we look at, at uh, uh, area high school sports, uh, area youth sports. Our generation has, we're the ones that are kind of uh, responsible for millennials, some of the older generation X folks who uh, a lot of folks like to rag on, you know, that they're entitled and all this kind of stuff and they're soft. This is all on us. We're the ones who did this. Generation X, look yourself in the mirror, put the blame on yourself because you're the ones that did it and I put myself in that too because I'm a Generation X guy. Now the thing is, how do we go about to correct this or how do we move on forward? In my opinion, I think it can work because I've seen it work still to this day. Now is it working perhaps, is it, be, is it going to eventually become where they are phased out, these kind of older, you know, you know, old school coaches? Perhaps. I, for one, don't want to see that happen, and I think this is a time now we're kind of a little bit at, at a what do you say a crossroads, BC, where we can we can we can make we can make amends, we can we can pull things back, we can make them right again. You know, we don't have to go down that that line uh, in in terms of allowing uh, coaches like of, of Coach Milky style, Coach Myron style, uh, Coach Chu style uh, to kind of be phased out. I don't want to see that end because in, ultimately. The, the support speaks volumes, Brett. No doubt. And, and, and that, to me, that speaks more than anything else. And the amount yeah. that he has gotten, the amount that John Myron got, the amount that Jeff Chu got yeah. speaks volumes, okay? So then mm -hmm. what do you look at the common denominator? Is it the coaches or, or, or is it us? You know what? I think there's a big problem. We might as well run, run the podcast a little bit longer. Although you've got minutes you got to watch, yeah, Ricardo. That's right. yeah. You know what one of the big problems is in, in the, is the AAU society we live in, the specialized sports society in which parents are shelling a lot of money. Yeah. And That's they a Generation X thing. And they want to see Junior get that scholarship, or they think that Junior is good enough to get that scholarship. And because they, he is in the AAU. Because he's in the AAU, yeah. and they're forking a lot of money. And you get into AAU, and you know this, so we've seen it. That's not as exactly as structured as a high school setting is where it's run and gun, we're going to showcase this, showcase that, and gets a little sloppy, a little ragged. Uh, but they think maybe their kid's a little bit better than they are, and uh, I think that's playing a big role because all of a sudden you get into a setting, you're like, come on, coach, my son's supposed to be doing this or my daughter's supposed to be doing that, and dang it, I've spent a lot of money uh, with camps and clinics and uh, AAU <laughs> tournaments and yeah. teams. You spend a lot of money in AAU. Yes, you do. Uh, and it's not just basketball, too, uh, club volleyball and all that stuff. So I think that's where this whole thing really started uh, to sort of get out of whack a little bit, maybe uh, unrealistic expectations. I will just say this, though, about the yelling uh, aspect of it. And I, and I bring this analogy at work. How many of us would sit here and take it if our boss came up and just started chewing our butt? Because yeah. maybe we messed up a little with something. None of us would. Well, I would. I, I, and I think I've told you in the, I've responded well to that. I'm, I'm a guy who, who actually doesn't mind getting yelled at. 
here, here, I hated here's getting yelled at. I'll tell you that. It, 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 it ticked me off when I was younger. Here's a provision. I, I almost even when hated it. Even when your dad yelled at you? Yeah, I didn't like really? it. Okay. I, I got I got anger. I wanted. I just wanted to. Uh, it might have been something with me. I didn't have a father. So maybe mm. I like the, the male father figure. I, don't, I didn't mind. Yeah, okay, go ahead. Uh, but I will say this, Brett, that um, I r- seem to respond better to that. To, to, to that to that aspect I had no problem with getting snapped at it was the it was the coaches that would just go and go and go and I'm thinking to myself shut up already you see <laughs> you know <laughs> be quiet I got the point here I got it oh. let's move on you know and then the ones that dwell and dwell and dwell there's nothing wrong with being stern as a coach absolutely nothing I, we I am as a parent I'm sure you guys are too your kid does something wrong you call him on it yep but then yep. you let it go all right and, and you don't have to always have that, 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 that look on your face, and not everything has to be life or death every play where you, where you snap and you, you can never enjoy the experience of, of coaching these guys. Brett, can I, can, real quick before we move on to the next topic, one provision here. If you knew that the boss, if you knew, have known the boss for a while and he's been in that position and you knew him as someone who got his point across in that way, does that temper a little bit how you approach that? For me, like in, when I talk to the Eppleton East players, they acknowledge that's how Milky is. We've been in the yeah. you know the youth progr- pr- program through Appleton East coming up. We're used to this, okay? That didn't phase them at all, and they understood that they had he had their best interest in mind doing this. I thought that was very telling. Yeah, I agree. It, it's a fine line with me on this because I don't, as I said, I don't mind a little barking every now and then. It's the ones that don't ever let it go. Okay. And Good John point. and John, I always thought John did show compassion. Okay. Uh, at times, yeah, he'd have the towel and the water bottle. He had that look, but I always, uh, I, I never saw that as a guy that was like just angry all the time. I just thought that was sort of his demeanor. So it's a fine line between some of the guys like John, where I think there's a, a heart of gold, as I said, a teddy bear underneath, and some of the coaches that frankly are just like, give it up, dude. I mean, you're a high school yeah. coach. I mean, show us, have a little positive structure here, could you please? And you well, know, and pat the kid on the back yeah. once in a while for or, doing something good rather some than always <laughs> nitpicking on the negative. I some are just plain mad or you love to yell, and some it's just their passion and their yeah. voice just – you, you it, yell, it's, and it's just because you're passionate. It's well, a fine line. It's I, a fine line. I do agree with you, yeah, that, that, that younger coaches coming up probably aren't going to get away with that style. That is no. not something that's going to be give to, that you're not going to be able to get away with that, uh, given uh, my generation's culture that we've created. Generation X, we've ruined <laughs> this. Uh, of of, and of I, I don't yell at my kid. You can't yell at my kid. And how much does this play a factor? Other than you know, when John is yelling at the kids, these parents are all in there, and it's that it's that certain mom's or dad's kid getting yelled at, and you're kind of getting embarrassed a little bit because your kid's getting yelled at. You know, and how much does that play into factor? Kind of like the mob mentality. You know, the, the other parents are like, I can't believe he's yelling at him like that. Or w- are you kidding me? Why, why are you embarrassing my kid? You know, that kind of stuff. I wonder how much that plays into it, too. Because, again, these parents, is, if, if, if it's, it's us, Generation X. We've turned soft. That's what it is. If it's constructive criticism where there's a little bark behind it, fine. I yeah. Mean, that's no big deal. Here's a great example. Steve Jones at Kimberly. Okay. I would not call Steve Jones a yeller. Okay. I would no. call what Steve Jones has created uh, the culture at Kimberly High School and his football program. He what is he a, a national coach of the year finalist again? Mm-hmm. Two times, two straight mm-hmm. seasons, seventy game winning streak, five straight state championships. You would and there's demanding. Uh, he demands. He expects certain things from his players, but he has created a culture of of, of positivity, right? A culture in which the freshmen are being helped by the seniors, right? There's servanthood going on there. There's a great example in my mind of a guy that gets the job done. He, he adapts to the kids nowadays. That does not mean he it, it isn't demanding, as I said. He, he expects the way, his way to be uh, the only way, but he does it in such a way where if you watch him at a game, I don't see, you know, they, they, they have a turnover, they make a mistake. I don't see... Any of these coaches in in the player's face screaming at him? I don't. No, when they were behind by twenty one to uh, was it Arrowhead that one year in the championship? I figured he'd be furious when they showed him on sidelines. He looked just like he did if they're up forty two nothing. Well, there's obviously different ways of doing it. There is because Coach yeah. Jones is, is is as highly successful as you can get, and then I can go to you the other way. And I've known Coach Bob Highland at yeah. for a long time. That's, old, that's an old that's school old guy. school, yeah, and right? he does it. He don't even wear a headset, man. No, he doesn't. You know, uh, yeah. and he does it his way. And they have had 
the most incredible success of any. You could say that you could put them with anybody in the state. Yeah. So there are different ways to doing it. Now it, it comes down to Brett. What do the what can the parents take? Can you take it that way or take it the other way? Again, I'm, I'm, I guess I'm just maybe I'm different. I, I like getting yelled at. That really motivated <laughs> yeah. me. I'll, I'll you know? remember that. I'm old Go enough. Go ahead and yell at me because I know you can yell at me because I've yeah. known you guys for a while yeah. and I've known my coaches when I was you know playing football. I knew them for a while. It was okay for you to yell at me. Sometimes that that got me going. Though sometimes the softer approach worked too. I mean, it, it's it is what it is. I think a lot of folks. Uh, I think Coach Milky knows the kids and what gets the the kids to perform at yeah. their best. You sometimes got to allow him to do what he feels is best to get the team going in the right direction. Yeah. So. I mean, when I played, and I'm, well, you know, I'm 50 now, so I played when they were yellers. I mean, but I got yelled at for not doing what I was doing or not tackling hard enough. So when I hit our biggest running back hard and stopped him for no gain, I still got yelled at. Great play! You well, know, yeah. It hits me on this. Good, helmet. that's a good point. But, so, but, that, so, but there's positive behind. Yeah, it, you know what I mean. And, yeah. yeah, but it's all within the same vehicle of yeah. the message, though. Th- that's different. Yeah. I mean, then you you understand that it's the ones that just go yeah. on and on, and, and yep. we've all seen that. Okay, we've all seen it. It's like, mm-hmm. geez, coach, calm down. Here yeah, a little I bit. mean, even when like when my son gets yelled at during you know basketball or football or something. I'm old enough where yeah, it, it's not going on and on, but it's not bothering me because that's what I figure. Well, he messed up. Coach is just correcting him. Some, but some coaches yell, some coaches talk. But I believe there are younger parents than me that kind of take it like, oh, well, what is he yelling at my kid for? How come he doesn't yell at this person when they mess up and it's that a, mess up? Yeah, there's a, you know, the mentality has changed a little bit. And I'm going to end it with this because we got to move on to the next subject. <laughs> but Brett, you know, like when when I was when I was playing, I was not allowed to go home and tell my mom, you know, coach was yelling at me. Her her, her was well, what did he do? It was always well, what did you do? Mm-hmm. What did you do? And now it's flipped. What did the coach say? Yeah. What did the coach do to you, little well, that, that little little Aaron, little Ashley? Well, what yeah. did he do to you? That also goes into the participation society yeah. where where every uh, <laughs> top top seven finishers get a ribbon or a yep. trophy or something now, yep. so that uh, they all don't feel bad. I, I and yeah, again, fine line. But you go back old school, and you remember, we always we all remember the stories of coaches grabbing too. And, yeah. And oh yeah. I mean, that, yep. Is that really the right way either? I don't think that. I think we have evolved from that time. Oh. I, don't, I don't think you need the physical yeah. aspect I mean, of it. The coaching culture is definitely it's, it's, it's a fascinating story. It's a fascinating story. We're going to touch on this more in the weeks to come because I, <laughs> I'm not exactly. done trying to figure out what, what it all happened, and, and we'll talk more yeah, about I mean, this. We've gone off on a tangent getting away really from the milky stuff. Yeah. None, of, none of this were really – but it is a fascinating how the coaching uh, it is. has changed, at least the way the society well, accepts more, it. More on this coming, so please look, follow me on, on Twitter at – uh, PC Ricardo and, and, and follow what, what what I'll be bringing to you in terms of updated stuff on this whole situation. Brett, we're moving on real quick. The WIA had their board of control meeting today, and a couple of things really came out that were surprising. I, I'll let you talk about what happened with the, the volleyball thing. Yeah, boys, bo- quickly, ahead. boys volleyball starting in 2019 will be played at the Rush Center, the state y- tournament. I love it. I think it's a great idea. No, look, I did not like that idea. Remember, I was sitting at Wisconsin Lutheran College. They do a great job of hosting that boys volleyball tournament, but then when I saw that they combined it with the girls. Mm-hmm. Okay, that's cool. Make it a volleyball yes. weekend, and you're in that's a big, cool. nice arena. Yeah, great I great idea. Nice, yeah. I, I take back my comments. I, I didn't know they were combining it with the girls' portion. Yeah, it's gonna this be is going to be great. Yeah. That now you're talking about it. Now it's going to be fun. Now it's going to be fun. because and, and you take them out of a gymnasium, and then you put them oh in yeah. an arena. I think that's cool. Yeah, and uh, I can't wait to see that. I, good move by the WIA, and, and another good move that they made. Uh, kind of, you know, backhanded compliment there was was voting down the rural urban <laughs> plan for basketball. Good job for, you know, having some common sense there. Though it, was it was a close, close vote. 6-5. Six, six, five. Five, and uh, I, I said last week that this, this had no chance of passing, but I guess it, it actually did come a little bit closer than I thought. Brett, they made the right move. Yes, they did. Made the right move because I'm sure they would have to have sent it in front of the members. That would have got voted down. You know, unequivocally, I know this would have happened. They would have voted that down. It wouldn't even be close. Yeah. But, uh, you know, it, it, it came 6-5. to five. It was close. Close, too close. Too close for comfort. But you're right. I mean, there's no da- uh, data to, su- you know, to even suggest right. that this is, is the right plan. So right. hopefully they'll maybe come up with a different solution. But uh, they may definitely made the right uh, call in just ending this uh, conversation for now. Yeah, and, 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 and there's a perceived problem there, though. So th- you're going to see this crop up again. Uh, in other ways, because they've 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 thrown all the proposals, you know, like the multiplier, the success proposal, the, you know, 
there's a, there's a segment of rural schools that just don't want to keep losing to those urban schools. They don't want to lose it. Your kid looks different than mine. They're doing it wrong. We're farmers, and we, we, we work hard. We're doing it the right way. You're going to see this continue to be a thing. <laughs> yeah, I say that because Mark Stewart had a nice, did you see his nice column on that? About how uh, yeah, I did. the socioeconomic impact of, and, and stuff like that, how perhaps it was a little bit unfair, but there's no proposals for that. You know what I mean? Uh, even though that is a, a definite problem that we have seen <laughs> that's prevalent throughout any state in the union here. Uh, but, yeah, so interesting stuff. Got some on Facebook from our friend Robert Hernandez. Uh, he said from what uh, the tweets, uh, they didn't actually vote on the plan. It was 6-5 to send it to the WIA annual meeting for the oh, membership okay. to vote. Right, so okay. Clear that up a little bit. Yeah, thank you, Rob, for, for clearing that up. It is going to get voted down by the, by the membership, <coughs> right? Um, so what are your thoughts on that uh, in terms of that, uh, that clarification? Thank you, Rob, again. So we're looking at the membership schools, and remember from the feedback that we've gotten, this doesn't stand a chance of passing. No, I don't think so either. I think it's it's something we can revisit, uh, I guess, uh, when 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 that does come down the pike. But for now, I, I think uh, there's enough um, there's enough opponent, uh, enough opposition out there that we're the, this is not the right plan, as as we just said. Wow. Interesting week. Thank you again, mm -hmm. Rob, for for clarifying that for us. But it's interesting, uh, it, but it, you know, again, I don't know what the solution is, but may, maybe get better. <laughs> That is, uh, and, uh, but uh, I and, uh, and please send me your comments at PC Ricardo or uh, on email at uh, r a r g u e l l o at postcards dot com. I know there's a uh, th there is a, a certain amount of folks who feel that it is a, a problem and, and needs to get resolved. The problem is there has been no proposal that's kind of like one fit you know size all or whatever, and and I don't know if you'll ever get that. That's the that's that that is the the conundrum I guess that you have. No, we brought up Howard's Grove as a great example. Uh, they're lumped with Sheboygan as, uh, I guess, an urban-type setting, even though they are rural, and they would go from D4 to D3, and their, their AD was like, ah, we don't want to play D3 schools. And why, why are we getting pushed up here? <laughs> yeah, we don't want to play Brown Deer. Saint, can you Saint imagine Mary, that, Howard's Grove and Saint Brown Mary Deer? St. Mary Catholic. Yeah, same thing. D5 would go up to D4. Obviously, they're here part of, part of the Fox Cities. That, that's not going to work. And the fact that it's, it's just on basketball. That's, that's what Mark Stewart, I remember, was talking yeah. about, how there's a, like a little bit of a racial – element perhaps there because it's just basketball that's being you know kind of put out there and w it's not volleyball or any of the other kind of sports it's just boys volleyball or, or boys and girls basketball you know what would make everybody happy if wissa came back right <laughs> that's what would make <laughs> yeah, everybody happy <laughs> i'm not even going to touch that no. subject uh, maybe next week we'll talk about that uh but yeah uh brett real quick kimberly oshkosh north boys hoops uh our live stream this friday right yeah we're going to go down to oshkosh north looking forward to getting back there first time that we'll get the stream of the great uh, Top-ranked Oshkosh North Boys basketball team, Tyrese Halliburton, the Iowa State recruit. Mm -hmm. Should be a great matchup. Kimberly's ranked in the top ten as well. I think they're, what, ninth, seventh? Uh, they're still in the top ten. Yeah, so a battle of two uh, top ten teams. Uh, looking li live, maybe about 7.15 uh, p.m. Still working out some of the uh, technical aspects at Rosie, yes, aren't we? we are. But uh, looking yes, forward to that are. one. Should be a great game between two of the best teams in Division One. And don't forget, Frank Sheedy's being honored yeah. uh, that, that night as well. So we, we're going to hope to have him on. Halftime. We don't know when exactly that that celebration is going to be. If it's if it's not if it's before the game, then ho we'll hopefully we'll have uh, Coach Shadia on on board. Talk to not just to talk about his retirement, but also about the Milky thing, because I I know those two coaches know each other very well. Oh yeah. Well, so there was there was a long, another old school type. <laughs> coach. Another old school coach. He's yeah. Like gruff, right? Yeah. So uh, interesting stuff that's coming up there. Uh, real quick, uh, this night or tonight, I should say, if, uh, at about seven o'clock. Roxy Roundtable, Appleton East girls basketball players Lexi Schneider and Audrey Roberts are coming on board. Remember, not too recently, they had the big upset over Appleton North. They're playing good ball they right now. They are playing great ball. Can't wait to have them on the show. The whole team's going to come down, so please watch 7 o'clock on postcrescent.com or facebook.com uh, slash postcrescent because uh, they're, ac they're excited to be here, and uh, they can't wait to be showcased because they're having a great season. A little bit of a dark horse and a little bit uh, flying under the radar in the FEA considering all the great uh, teams that they have in that conference, but we can't wait to have the Patriots on here. Yeah, so. it's going to be fun. I, I, it's just they've won, like, what, 10 out of 11 or something yes, like that. They've, so they've, they've nice been red stream. hot. So Yeah, can't maybe, wait. Maybe we should get them on a, on a game stream sometime. Let's see if we can make that happen. we still got some time. Postseason's coming up as well, so we might run into the, the Patriots at that point as well. But, again, thank you all for tuning in. We went a little bit longer, but I think uh, the subject matter uh, uh, made it to where we had to. Yeah, oh, yeah, there's a lot going on, and I'm, I'm guessing we'll talk a little bit more about the – this stuff, the John Milkey situation and coaching uh, next week, too. All right. So it's not going to end this week for All sure. All right. So thanks for listening again and watching. By the way, if you, if you, if you can't watch us live uh, during uh, the live stream, don't forget on iTunes, Stitcher, and Google Play, 
download the R&B show, uh, subscribe to it, and you'll get it uh, every week in your inbox, ready to listen to uh, our sultry voices. So until uh, next week, have a great week, everybody. We'll talk to you back here next Wednesday. You want to throw one? No, you, it's all you. All right. Ooh. Oh, well, it was close. That one was that dead was center. Right there you go. Better at basketball than football. And that was way better than my intros <laughs> yes. this week, too. I don't know what happened there. <laughs>